in there? It is Thursday, July 1st, 2021. Yeah, I got it right. <laughs> I think that's what it is. I'm going to sit here and wait. It's all about play today. We started with the playground a year and a half ago. Wow, it's been a long time that we've been doing this nearly every day. So, I see someone. Come on in. Come on in. It's all fun time today. It's all about play. All the messages that I'm getting. And I sat here for a minute and I was tuning in. And what I'm getting is, is that first I wanted to say the answer is yes. The answer is yes. We so often ask, can we do that? The answer is yes. That's your answer. If you see someone else doing something and you really want to do it. Yes. Energetically, the, the work that we're doing now is something that I never thought possible. And so years ago, I thought, can I do that too? And the answer was yes. And so I'm telling you today, can you do that too? The answer is yes. So that's where we are today. It's all about play. It's all about having a positive attitude. It's all about being open. Being open. We get our spiritual gifts when we're open-minded, when we're open-hearted, when we're childlike. So, hi Melissa, how are you? Good afternoon. I see two now. I try to take it slow because I tend to not get here on time. I've been out mowing the lawn today before the rains hit, so I'm running a little bit behind again. So many things to do to be human. So, just waiting. Hi, Rebecca. Keep coming in. Oh, you guys are flying in now. It's great. Keep coming. Um, as I've been going through this, it's all about play. Hi, Tammy Fisk. Good morning. Good afternoon. <laughs> I can't get off of my good morning. I just like saying good morning better. It's more comfortable for some reason. Hi, Rachel. How are you guys? I hope that you're remembering to play. It, it feels like it's really important. Because everything that we want, all of the gifts, the abilities that people, you see other people doing. I have you on notifications. Well, I great, Melissa. It's good. Everybody should do that because I'm not very consistent. When I first started doing the playground, I was on... Um, Enlightened Living, Enlightened World Network, and so they had lots of shows going, so I had a, a set time, and I was pretty good at 9.30 every day, pretty close to on time every day. Um, I moved over here because I'm very flexible in my world. I, I never know for sure what's going to happen, and time is becoming something that's very fluid to me, and so I feel, I've always felt when it's time, and so I'll just kind of wait, and then uh, something triggers me, it's like, okay, do it now. And so I've been staying pretty close to that 12 o'clock range, but... I've never been very good at keeping schedules. I don't know about you guys. I think it's part of being an empath. We don't like rules. <laughs> we don't like rules and we don't like schedules. So, um, and that goes into what I'm talking about today. It's all about play. So we're just going to have some fun because the most important thing that I have learned that I've worked with other people on is remembering the inner child, healing the inner child. Hi, Lisa Kessler. So good morning, John. I believe that's you. Um, afternoon, <laughs> evening, if, you, if it's over on your side of the world. Um, so we're all about easing up on ourselves. Picnic, yay, fun time. I love fun time. I love it when you go, you know, as old as I am. <laughs> and this will be a big year for me. I'll be double numbers. I'll be uh, 55 in October. I'm not even ashamed to say it. Um, I feel like I get younger and younger, and I'm not afraid to go on the swings or play on the teeter-totter, or I love doing balancing beams. I love everything turns into a balancing beam for me. If I see, you know, a log or something on the ground, my inner, my instincts just go to balancing on it and walking across it. I love to do that kind of stuff. I'm very childlike still most of the time. Sometimes I get lost in my grown-upness. <laughs> I've raised six kids, so and there was three stepkids thrown in there, too. So I, um, I can sometimes fall into that sense of responsibility. It's no fun, is it? <laughs> that sense of responsibility. i got to take care of everybody else. I've been telling my kids, I'm like, you know, guys, <laughs> you're all kind of grown-ups now, almost. <laughs> the youngest is 14. They're kind of growing up now. It's about time. It's about time for them to take care of me so I can be the child. They can be the grown-ups. Seems fair. <laughs> so... 
the message that came through today was all about play. I've been stuck in the ego there for a few minutes. 44 this year. Yeah, double years. We got these numbers going, don't we? It'll be 55. I like 54. I've always liked even numbers. But there's something about these these multiple digits, the 555 five, five, and the 333 three, three, and the 444 four, four, and the 666 six, six, and the 999. 999 is big. And then back into 111. 999 is like the end the ending of something and then you pop back into the 111 and all of a sudden it's all something brand new again so I love the numbers and I love how more and more people are seeing them again it seems like we're really getting a lot of messages the angels are playing with us that's the truth our guides our angels they love to play so that's what it's all about today is play so some of the most important moments that I've had in my um quest, this quest to be more, to learn more about um, what we're capable of, it has been using a very playful nature. The angels love to play with us. They love it when we come at them very childlike. When we come in and we're very, if we're all serious, it's no fun. Angels don't really like that. <laughs> it's the truth. We all think of them as being so serious. Archangel Michael come in with a big sword and he's laughing when I say that because he really has a great sense of humor. Um, they love it when we sit down and we go, okay, I'm going to play a game and I would like to feel what your energy feels like and we name one of them and they just come in. And it's that childlike innocence that creates the connection, which is another big word for me today and has been for a long time. Connection and play. It's that childlike innocence that brings us to that place where we, we throw all those doubts out the window. You know, like so many of you, I know sometimes people pop in and pop right back out. They're like, oh, she's going into some kind of religion. I'm not religious at all. There goes my child. There's a butterfly just went right around the window. Hello. <laughs> I love butterflies. Anyway, um, <clears throat> I'm watching now. You see me? I'm distracted. Put on the blinder, little girl. Um, the thing is, is that when we were little, when we were small, we were super powerful. We believed in everything. There was nothing. Of course, there was some scary things that, that kind of got at us. We believed there was something hiding under the bed. We believed there might be something in the closet. We also believed in fairies. We believed in fairy tales. We believed in happily and ever afters. We believed that as we walked through the forest, there was little fairies in the trees. We believe that fireflies were pure magic. Everything, when you look at little children, I'm seeing my youngest one, and that was very small. Those, the magic, the magic in those eyes, like so filled with wonder, you know? And we, um, we forget that. <laughs> we go, well, we're grown-ups now. We gotta lay all that aside. Our, somebody tells us, and you can't sit there and just live in a fairy tale world anymore. You've gotta grow up. They were wrong. You don't really have to grow up. The most powerful part of you is the child that is still very much inside of you. And if you haven't been paying attention to that child, you're missing the boat because the child and that imagination is where we gain our abilities, where we enhance our abilities. It's in that, that open-hearted, hi Sandy, it's in that open-hearted believing. You know, letting ourselves just be in that space of, well, you know, I don't really know. We, we have this idea that not knowing the answer to something is uncomfortable. That somehow makes us weaker, smaller, not as smart, whatever. And the, the most beautiful parts of life, <clears throat> the most beautiful abilities, you know, the things that you're capable of, they come in that space of, I don't really know. Because that's the space where you've let everything else go, those unbeliefs, those things that you've been taught along the way that aren't really all that useful to you. You know, you've been taught a lot of stuff. You, the most important thing that you can do at some point is just to throw it all down. <laughs> just, okay, I've been to all these different churches, I've been to all these different meetings, I've had all these parents, teachers, everyone telling me what to believe in my whole life. And when you were really small and even now, you went along with you took on the belief systems. You were looking at the outside resources all the time. And we all, the truth is, is that we're all completely, perfectly, totally unique. Our, um, 
our truths are very different. My truth may be very different from your truth. My truth might resonate with you sometimes. That's why you're here. But you have the right to believe, to choose to follow, to choose to go down any path, to choose to pick up anything that you want to pick up along the way. And you also have the right to lay down and say, no, nah, I don't want to go there. And that's okay. And I'm never, it used to kind of bother me. Now it's like, no, oh, it doesn't bother me because I want the, the right to believe any way that I choose. I want the right to walk through the planet and believe that, that we are able and capable, super capable of healing with energy. We're, we're able and capable of healing ourselves. We're very capable of healing other people, of allowing this beautiful angelic energy to channel through us, to come in through the hands, and just all of a sudden we're like, okay, hold on, here it comes, boom, heal. <laughs> we are capable of those things, but we have chosen to not believe. We've been told not to believe that because somewhere along the way we were told that there was only certain people, a certain person, who actually came to show us what we are capable of doing too. So it wasn't like, oh, I can do this, but I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm the only one. <laughs> that was not, that wasn't even the way that it was done. That's not even the way that it happened. It came to show you what you can do and so much more. Doesn't that feel better? Doesn't that feel good? And it wasn't just that religious figure, which I don't really see him as religious. I see him as a friend, as a teacher. Um, but there was so many, all the way along the way, there's been so many healers. There's been so many beautiful teachers. There's been so many guides that we have written about, that we have, you know, these ascended masters. And along the way, the greatest thing that they were teaching was acceptance, that they were teaching love. They were teaching this inclusiveness, like, not like, oh, I exclude you because you don't believe what I believe. <laughs> it was, I love you anyway. I love you. Whatever you choose to, whatever you choose to believe, whatever you choose to follow, there's only love. That's what the true ascended masters are all about. You get to believe as you choose to believe, and we love you anyway. Isn't that beautiful? So, hmm, Melissa, beautiful. So, here I sit in that place of inclusiveness, of just saying, whatever, wherever you are on your path, whatever you believe, the most important thing is to go back to being a little child who is open. Open to believe anything. Open to believe that maybe an angel stands behind you right now. Can you feel it? Open to believe that there was always an angel with you no matter what happened. Open to believe that each one of your children have angels around them open to believe that maybe there really is fairies, fairies in the forest. I, I, long before I really got into my spirituality, I would still, I always had this very magical child inside of me, and I would walk through the, the deep forest, and when I would see dragonflies or little you know, things, I would go, I'd look a little bit harder. I'm like, I think that there's a fairy over there, and I remember telling my children when they were small, do you see them? I've always had that, that part of me, and I believe that we all do. We may have buried that little child that still sees the magic, but you're still in there someplace until I'm trying to shake you out today. Come on out and play. Don't hide your child. Come on out and play. Let's be little children today. Let's just dance in the forest. Let's sing like silly people. You know how little children are. They always love the way they look. They put on a funny little bathing suit. I think three, four-year-old before they're told any different. They put on a little pink polka dot. My oldest was the chunk muffin. And she was such a chubby little thing when she was two, three years old. She was a chunk muffin. Most of my kids were. I had healthy, big, strong, strapping, chunky little cutie pies. And I remember her when she was very small. She's 30 years old now. Jeez, <laughs> she's grown up. But I remember she went to a little pool party with a couple of her friends, and I bought her the cutest little pink polka dotted bikini type thing. It was a one piece. It came down here, but her little little bit of her chubbiness here, and it was and it was cute. And she was so cute. And I put her out in that bathing suit, and she was just like, <sighs> she loved herself in that bathing suit. She just thought that she hung the moon and the stars, and so did I. 
She didn't stand in front of the mirror at that age and go, oh, there's a little crease there, there's a little chubbiness there. There's, you know, she didn't look at those little rolls because you know how little toddlers, they got those little rolls in their legs, that little crease where the little chunkiness meets, one little chunkiness meets another little chunkiness and then right in the middle there's that little crease in their thigh and it's the cutest thing. Why do we think this is so adorable when they're little like that and then somewhere along the way we start thinking it's bad? Why? Why? Why are we so hard on each other and why are we so hard on ourselves? So I really want you to go back to being that little three-year-old today. And I want you to imagine yourself. If you can remember, it's even better. Remember what you were like when you, when you went to go swimming on the beach. And of course, you got all slathered with stuff, hopefully. We didn't. We just burned up when I was a kid. <laughs> we didn't even know what sunscreen was. As a matter of fact, when I was young, they put on that stuff that made you tan. <laughs> so you burned even worse. <laughs> Whatever. Anyway. It's because I'm old. We didn't, we didn't get much protection when I was a kid. We didn't have seat belts when we drank out of the water hose. It's true. But... But we had fun, and we didn't worry about putting on a bathing suit in front of people. We just went down, and we just had fun in the water. So I would like you to be that little person today with me. I want you to remember. That's where our meditation is going to go. It's going to be short and sweet. I just want you to remember what you were like, because you were the most powerful when you first came into the world, this little bitty person. Do you ever hold a newborn, and you put them up to your shoulder, and you're like, Smell their little head. I had six of them. <laughs> I couldn't get enough. Couldn't get enough of it, obviously. And they're little, uh, you, go, you look at them and they're born and they're like, oh gosh, how did you come from me? <laughs> you're so perfect, you know? And you're just like, and they smell so good. You just put them up to your nose and you're like, oh gosh, you just smell delicious. You smell so good. This is a piece of heaven I'm holding in my hands. As close as you could get to a piece of heaven is that little bitty person. So... That's you, too. You still have that little bitty person, that huge, big soul. And you came into the world wide-eyed, innocent, ready to change things, ready to just bring love. And you were so gifted. How many of us know, can you remember how gifted you were when you were little? You were so magical when you came into the planet. And then people started telling you what you couldn't do, what not to believe in. And you started laying down your magic. You started giving it away, giving away your power. So today I'm all about that. I'm all about the inner child. Yes. Babies are so amazing. They are so amazing because when you, when you hold them in your arms, when you lay them down like this, it's like you feel that energy. And it's like, wowzer, you are an amazing creature. You know, you like look at them. I used to sit there with Jess, my oldest. And I put my knees up. We're still in the hospital. I think was his first maybe. And I'm like, oh, gosh, look at you. And I lay there in the bed and I put my knees up. And I put her face right there. She'd lay on my lap. And she'd be right here. And i just look at her. And I'm like, oh, gosh. <laughs> You're so beautiful. Can you imagine? Can you remember? And that's still you. That's why I'm telling you that story. It's still you. You're still that magical being that came into the world. The most powerful most amazing piece of heaven came into the earth and you didn't go away as you grew up. You stayed there inside this body. You're still there. So I'd love to shake you up a little bit and say, okay, come on, come on, come on back up. Let me see your true self. Let me see that beautiful, beautiful being that you are. I want you to go back to being that most powerful little person remembering that anything is in your reach. Because all of these abilities that are coming through now, they come through because we have the belief system. We have opened back up, and we believe it's possible. So if we go into a healing session, yesterday we had one of the most amazing healing sessions. It turned into an all-day thing, and it was exhausting. And yet, those who were a part of it when I look at him now, I'm like, look, like that little dog is better. That person looks, looks younger, looks healthier, looks stronger. So much work was done. John was part of that, too, so was Carol. And so much work was done. Gerilyn, if she pops in. 
Um, but we did so much, and it was absolutely amazing. And sometimes I go, wow, did you see that? Like, were we really a part of that? And other times I just, like, walk away like, yeah, that's what we do. <laughs> like, of course. Of course that's what happened. There's that need to, as you come back into your magic, your power, <clears throat> there's that that something happens to us. <clears throat> Sometimes you see people fall really into ego. Hold on. <clears throat> and they want to start bragging. Wow, did you see that? And it kind of saps your energy. It kind of pulls you back out. It's like, big deal. You know, like, we, uh, we are doing, see if I can make my point here. We are doing what we are created to do. We're pulling in energy that we, we are created to do this. We, we brought this ability in with us. And there is nothing that we do that somebody else, the next guy can't do as long as they believe. So yes, it's a miracle. Every time it happens, I sit there and go, wow, I'm so blessed to be a part of that. Thank you so much for allowing me to help you to do that. And it is just why I'm here. It's just why we're here. It's why we came here. <laughs> I don't want to be put on a pedestal any more than Jesus or Buddha or anybody else did. It's just that we, we are what we are. We are magnificent beings. We are powerful beings. And we don't need to be put on a pedestal to be any better than we already are or any more powerful, any more amazing. Yes, you're amazing. And you just, you just do it because you were built for it because that's what you came here for, right? There's just that sense of it's like this weird balance, the sense of, wow, that was amazing and I just did what I came here to do. And difficult to explain, but I think it's that childlike part of me that's like, well, of course I can walk across that balancing beam. <laughs> of course I could jump off of that swing set and fly. <laughs> of course I swang to the, I went swinging so high I went to the moon. <laughs> like, that's, that's what I think it is. That's why I keep coming back to the child. It's that part of you that even though you think it's not possible, even though there's this doubtful part like, oh, maybe this won't work. You know, you got that little voice and you're like, oh, I'm trying to do this and I wonder if it's actually going to work. And then there's that childlike presence that comes in and says, of course. You know, remember when you were a child? Of course it's going to work. <laughs> of course I can make something out of this mud. You know, of course I can make a pie. Of course I can call in a fairies. Of course, of course, you know, like, <laughs> so... I'm encouraging you today, play, be like the child that just believes. You know, until we teach it out of a child, they believe they can fly to the moon. They believe that they can do anything. We've taught it out of them and it's been taught out of us. So that's my thing today, is that I would love for you guys to remember, remember the little one inside of you she or he really wants to be remembered or they whatever whichever direction you go i have a kid that's a they for sure whichever we don't have to even put ourselves in that box we just be just be today just be the best the best version of yourself which which began on the day that you you took a breath the first breath and you came into the world and you were your most powerful self and so if we can go back to that and play, go into the forest and see the fairies, allow yourself to believe that you can heal from anything, you can, you can heal from anything, we can be talked into being very, very sick, I saw my husband get talked into being very sick, I saw him go from being a very healthy man to being told he had cancer and being gone six weeks later, I saw him at five weeks in being told sir this is as bad as it's going to get I saw him and I saw the fear enter his body and I saw his spirit quit I saw him give up I know that if it works that way well we can be taught or told that we're sick so we end up giving up that we can also be told that we're well and that we become well out of it's our our belief system that creates the energy of healing but also creates the energy of becoming well so, and that, all of that comes to childlike presence. So, it's that powerful. That's why I'm not just trying to give you some silly stuff to go play in. I'm saying that if you, could, if you could go back to the faith that you had in the moment of your birth, you would be unstoppable. 
there be no everyone on the planet, if we could all go back to what we were when we stepped into physical form, there would be no more death, there'd be no more hungry children, there'd be no more illness or disease, there'd only be, there wouldn't be any more hate. Babies don't hate. Babies don't, they're not afraid when they first come into the world. They don't have all of that, all of that negativity when they step in. They just come in with this childlike, beautiful wonder and magic. And so, as you go into meditation, try to take on that energy again sometimes. Just be the child. Sit and doodle and daydream and allow your child to have full reign. Go swinging. Go swing to the moon today. Go to the park. Get on the swing. And swing as high as you can. I challenge you. Have fun. Enjoy yourself. Find joy. Find love. Find, find that inner part of you because it's in that place that suddenly your loved ones are going to have a wide open connection to you. It's that highway. The imagination. We have conscious and subconscious and they're very busy highways they're going all the time they're just busy 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 in the middle of all that you have this beautiful imagination that inner child comes out in the center and that is an open highway that allows you to connect to the other side and to communicate with those that you love so enjoy that. I hope that you're getting the message that you need. You love the sunflower, Lisa. Yeah, it's kind of like if I do it just right, I'm like centered in the sunflower. <laughs> it's fun. See, my child, my child is very active. <laughs> it doesn't matter what the calendar says your year is. I'm very childlike, and I like that. I like that. I didn't used to be like that. I used to be very old. I used to be very unhappy. It's in allowing the inner child to come out and play that we find our joy again. So enjoy that. All right, you guys, anybody that wants to join me, we're going to go in and just do a little childlike presence. We've done this before. When I first started these, it was all about playing. So I would like for you, <laughs> here she goes, I would like for you, I'm a daycare worker, by the way. <laughs> I have taught Sunday school. I've been a Girl Scout counselor camp counselor. What else? I raised six kids. I've been a nanny. Can you tell? So that little person, my person, who takes care of children is coming out right now. And your child is inside of you. And my Mother Mary presence is coming out to say, it's safe now. Archangel Michael is here protecting us. Your little child is so important. And I would like for you to reach down deep they may be hiding in a blanket fort. They do that. If we bury them far enough, if they get afraid when they're little, or there's trauma when you're little, that, that tiny little part of you will start to build walls up. And so many of us don't even know that we have an inner child because they're so well hidden. So I would like for you to see if you can find, dig down deep, and see if you can get, the whole, get a hold of the hand of that little one. See if you can find it that little person inside. And as you do, we're coming into a room together. I got the door open, just like kindergarten, <laughs> just like Sunday school, whatever you want to envision. There's toys in here. It's easy, it's safe. We would never get hurt in here. It's perfectly safe, I promise. And you can bring that little child into this space, this healing space now. So take a big breath and pull that little one in. Feel that silliness. Maybe they're scared and that's okay. We're gonna coax them into the room, it's okay. Have you ever seen a kindergarten class? You got some kids that come in and they're all cutesy and they're ready for anything. And then you got some that are like clinging to mom's leg. If your little inner child is clinging to your leg, it's okay, come on in. I promise you, you won't get hurt, we'll have fun. And so as you pull them in, you can stay with them. Call in your higher self if you'd like and say, come on, little one. We're going to go sit down together. And you can sit in the rocking chair and hold that little child if you'd like. You don't have to leave. They don't have to be ripped off mama's leg. Just come in and sit with them. The most important thing you can do is learn to comfort your own inner child. Be the parent that you needed when you were little and bring them in. So as you enter, I feel your energy entering the space very sweet, 
beautiful. And now I want you to just create a circle. We're all together. We'll all sit down together. Do you remember? Ooh, this is fun today. Do you remember gym class when you were little? And I remember it. We had a parachute. And the parachute had handles all the way around. And if it didn't, we'd roll it up. In the gym, we could, we could make, it was a full-on parachute. And everybody would get under it, and then you'd and it'd come down and you just sit there and it'd be like this collapsing parachute coming down over the top. It was one of my favorite games as a little girl. I loved playing under the parachute. Let's do that now. Let's create. You were a Girl Scout, Lisa. Of course you were. Girl Scouts are, are awesome. We used to sell cookies. I was a Girl Scout counselor at a summer camp. That was the most... All right, so I want you to go ahead and see yourself in that circle and we have this beautiful parachute. Hmm, it's all the colors of the rainbow. I remember that. It was just so colorful and beautiful. And so as we sit down together, we go poosh, and it goes up in the air. Boom. And we're just sitting underneath that. Did you like it, Tammy? It was beautiful, wasn't it? So we're sitting there under that parachute. And the parachute, the angels are just holding it up, so it's not going to collapse fully on us. It's like this air. They're fluttering their wings, and it's creating this air under the parachute. And it's just staying up around us. And we are perfectly safe in the middle of that parachute. See your little child now smiling, looking up in wonder. How beautiful. And now we're going to play a game. We're going to create energy balls together. We've done this before. It's really fun, and you can do this anytime. So we're calling in Archangel Raphael and calling in for healing, calling in Archangel Gabriel for clarity, Archangel Uriel to balance our emotions. Juan Yin likes to come in for that divine feminine energy. We'll allow that too, that's okay. We like that powerful energy. Archangel Michael is already here holding us safe. And so we sit here and we're gonna make a ball. We're gonna first you're gonna just shake off some energy. Hi John, I see you're back. We're making, we're playing under a parachute. We're gonna play ball. Cookies are the the twenty twin mini. Min, oh yes, the twin mints. Yum. Mm. You know which ones I like? The Samoas with the. I think it's a Samoa. It's got the coconut and the caramel and the chocolate. Oh my gosh, it's so good. Don't even get me started on Girl Scout cookies, Lisa. We can have cookies here. In this little world, they don't make us. You don't make us chubby at all, or sick. <laughs> Mostly they make you sick, but they won't make us sick here. So we can play with them now. We can have cookies if we want. So when we're done making these energy balls, we'll have cookies, Lisa, because you brought it up. We'll have milk too, cookies and milk. All right, so we got all that energy now. Can you feel it? Now when you move your hands away, the energy goes in between your fingers. It's so powerful, you can feel it. And so we're filling this up. I want you to see yourself filling up this balloon with that healing energy. The angels are helping. And you can feel it. It's palpable. I'm going to take this ball and I'm going to throw it. And somebody's going to catch it. And then they're going to make one and throw it to somebody else. Okay, you ready? And you can just, we're just going to have these. We're under the parachute. And just make a ball. Fill it right up with all your healing energy. You're just filled with it. The angels are helping. And we're going to throw that ball around. And as you catch it, that energy just hits you. It's going to be beautiful. So on the count of three, just throw your ball at somebody. Don't throw it hard. This is not dodgeball. <laughs> we're playing catch. We're kindergartens. Remember. <laughs> be gentle. On the count of three. One, two, three. Oh, I got one. Thank you. Thank you for that. Can you feel that energy? Oh, that's nice. John, that came from you. I know it. That was very nice energy. Now just hold that energy for a minute, as if you've got the ball, and you can even take it and put it into your heart if you like. But hold on to it and feel it. Let your little child enjoy that. Let your little child play a little bit with the ball, whatever that child would like to do. Mm -hmm. I love coconut things, that's one of my favorite things. Just enjoy that energy for a moment. 
Let's allow that child to just get filled up with all kinds of love energy. Bringing healing to those wounds, those places where maybe you were traumatized or not fully loved the way you needed to be loved as a child. A little empaths, you, you set yourself up for a rough road sometimes. We just need love. We give love so easily. And we just need to be loved. And so few people understand it. So we're sitting under this beautiful parachute and we're just allowing that love to unfold. That, that parachute is just filled with love now. And if you'd like, you can get yourself another ball going and you can throw it again. I'm going to make another one and throw it and it's going to go all the way around. You guys bounce it all over the place, whatever you'd like to do. So I'm going to just kind of clear it out and then just start making it again. Let it fill right up. You can feel it. If you try, it's palpable. This is a fun game. Our little children love games like this. Be the child. Believe. It's not so hard to believe that this is possible. I can feel the energy building between my hands. Sending love. My own, my higher self is joining in. It's like coming from me to my heart. My higher self is filling this one right up for whoever gets it. Okay, on the count of three, we're going to throw it again. One, two, three. <laughs> Boom. The more love we get, the more we receive. When you send out love, it always comes back. Beautiful. How is your little one feeling right now? Very, very. My my little inner child is like, oh, I'm ready for a nap now. <laughs> it's time for cookies and milk. I'm getting tired. <laughs> so what we're going to do now is we're going to lift that beautiful parachute up. We're going to go back to that little circle time. And each one of you get your cookies, Lisa. Choose your cookie of choice and your milk. And I want you to pull that little, that little child back inside of you. Let them know that you're all nice and clear, your energy is nice and clear, that little one is there and comfy. You're going to create a nice safe space. Put them down for a nap. So take a big breath and pull them in. Mm. So nice. They feel safe and secure. When your inner child feels safe, it changes everything. You find your magic again. Easy, nice. So you're pulling that higher self back in, all of you back into that safe space of you. Take a big breath. so big you can hardly fit back in there, aren't you? It's beautiful. Calling in Archangel Michael to wrap each one of you in a bubble today. Beautiful, whatever color bubble you want. Wrapping you right up. Allowing you to feel safe, protected, whole, clear, at peace. Beautiful. Feeling those feet again. Feeling your hands. Lots of heat in my hands right now. That's healing energy. That's great if you're feeling that too. Bring it with you. Go over and touch your little dog and see what happens. <laughs> Go touch a loved one with all that energy that you've got stored up inside of you right now. Just see what happens. Big breath. Easing yourself back into wakefulness. Opening your eyes. Thanking the angels, thanking Archangel Michael for all the protection, Archangel Raphael for healing, Archangel Gabriel for some clarity, whatever question you're asking. Better communication, your higher selves, being more connected. Archangel Uriel for helping with those emotions. All of your higher selves, all of you, you little children, thank you so much for sharing your children with me today. You are all just the sweetest, cutest little people. That was so much fun. Thank you guys so much today for joining me. I appreciate you. I will be back soon. 
I usually don't come in on Fridays and Saturdays. Sometimes I bop in. We'll see. We'll see. We gotta we gotta do a show here sometime on attachments. It won't be as much fun as this. It's a little more serious, but we'll find a time. Maybe tomorrow will be a good time for that. Please take good care of yourselves. I love you so much. I will talk to you soon. Bye. <laughs>